Hello friends and family, it's me, Jessie. So sorry if the camera quality is a little overexposed. It is a very sunny and warm day here in Fuzhou, and so it probably makes me look a little bit washed out. But anyway, today I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit about homesickness and what exactly that feels like. Um, and how to manage it and sort of that sort of thing because you know I've been in China for like six months now uh, I got here in February and it is now August 1st, which is a little crazy that a uh, time went by very quickly uh, So I thought I would since I have some experience dealing with it now that I would tell you guys a little about how to deal with it, how I manage it, and uh, how to make China feel like home. So obviously when you move to another country, um, you're not going to be around your friends and family. Like friends and family, your friends and family. And I think specifically with China, uh, that's noticeably different. Ah, yes, the stairs from being a vlogger. Uh, it's noticeably different because you're in a completely different culture. Um, and you may not even be around English speakers that are from your home culture. And so sometimes it can feel a little bit isolating uh, or a little bit like, it's just really different and uh, hard to deal with. So one tip, one piece of advice, because I did deal with quite a bit of homesickness, and I still do deal with quite a bit of homesickness, that my old roommate gave me was, in your first few months or weeks, I guess, try not to call home every time you get homesick. Um, because in a lot of ways, it can just make it worse because you get so reliant on um, what it feels like to be at home and what it feels like to talk to people at home and you just miss them more and more instead of learning how to adjust, so to speak, to your new environment. And so uh, I guess that's one tip I would give you. Contact home to keep in touch, but don't use it as like your only mechanism of socialization and uh, don't rely on your family to keep you happy because ultimately you move to a different country for a reason. You know, like, you're, ooh, finger. You're not just here to stay here, talk to your family and make an easy life for yourself that's pretty much the same as the West because that's really giving up a big opportunity living here because it's not the West and you need to adjust to enjoy it. But that doesn't mean it's not okay to feel homesick and it's unrealistic to think that you won't feel homesick, honestly. Um, I think my next tip would be make your home, like your apartment, to feel like home. So bring a few things from home, like maybe a little trinket or something uh, that makes it seem like how you would normally decorate your house. Get some plants, get some flowers, hang up pictures of your friends and family, things that you like. Really make your home something that you can enjoy when you come home to. Not just like a place where you're living, but somewhere that you genuinely enjoy, genuinely enjoy staying at. Because that will really make all the difference in the world if you like where you go home, because it ends up feeling like home, ultimately. If you feel like you're going to some apartment that is san sanctioned for you, that doesn't look like your home, and it's just sort of sterile and barren, uh, that's not really gonna feel very homey, you know? So I guess my second tip to you would be, sorry, I'm crossing the street, would be to make your apartment feel like home and to make friends that make it feel like home to you. Because ultimately, okay, you can't go. It's not your turn. Ultimately speaking, sorry, there was a car, that guy. See, he was just deciding to go anyway. Uh, ultimately, it is, it is different and the culture shock is pretty noticeable but if you make the little spaces that feel like home to you already at your own home feel like your home it'll make it even better then i guess my other advice would be look for things in the city that are similar to where you're from so for me uh, the city i lived in before i moved here was smaller uh, but it had a lot of greenery and trees and the greenery and trees remind me of where i lived before before i lived in china so obviously there wasn't all the cars and the buses and the tall buildings, but because there was greenery, people walked everywhere, people were kind and sociable, I was able to sort of piece those two things together and say, okay, well, it, it is China, but in some small ways, it does still feel like Auburn or my hometown for me. Um, so I would definitely find things that seem like home in a small way, or like if learn how to make your favorite meals, for example do little things that make it feel like home. Obviously it's not, but cook meals for yourself that are like, if you ate eggs and toast for breakfast every day, learn how to make your favorite dishes. Learn how to make lasagna if you're into that. Um, learn how to make your favorite dishes for yourself so you can still eat your cuisine that you're used to eating, get the recipes that the people who made it used for you, and then that should help quite a bit as well. Uh, for me, it is particularly easier to come home because I have my cat uh, and that's, very homey because he is literally from my home uh, and so I guess if you have a pet that would help uh, I think that's a t 
not everybody can get a pet, so that's very subjective to me. Um, but I can't really think of anything otherwise. Sorry, I always feel weird walking in front of large crowds of people vlogging. I think you know that by now. Uh, but I guess, yeah. So my tips to you are to not talk to your family and friends at home too much. Don't rely on them for your social interaction. Make friends, make relationships here. Decorate your apartment so that you actually enjoy going home to it, whatever way that is to you. Learn how to cook things at home uh, or from home so that when you want to eat things that make you feel, you know, homey or when you're feeling a little homesick that you can eat them. Uh, let's see, what else would I say? <laughs> um, oh yeah, last thing. Uh, find things around the city that make it feel like home to you, whatever it is. You know, one thing I've definitely learned since moving abroad is that while it is very different, it's not that different. Um, people are still leaving their, leading their day-to-day -day lives, no matter where you are. Uh, they're living normal lives. They're going to the grocery store. They're taking their kids to school. They are taking the bus to work. They're going shopping for new clothes. They're going on dates. In principle, although there are a lot of history and cultural, different, cultural differences, in principle, it's still the same. It's still people le leading their daily lives. So try not to obsess over the differences too much and find ways to make it seem more similar and more homey. It's gonna feel different and it's gonna be something you struggle with, but there are other ways to cope with it. Uh, so although it may have been a bit of a short video, I hope that that can be helpful to somebody. Um, I know homesickness is a big reason why some people avoid going abroad and I don't think Homesickness is a reason to avoid the opportunity. I think it can be a good way to learn and grow and to give yourself opportunities to travel in the future if you learn how to conquer that fear now versus learning how to, you know, or what do you, sorry, bus, learning how to deal with that fear later. So just go ahead and it's probably gonna be something you're gonna deal with, unfortunately, but there are ways to cope with it and it's not something that the people around you aren't experiencing so you can talk to other people about it who might be able to relate to you. Um, it's not something anybody hasn't experienced before, and it's probably a really healthy way for you to learn how to grow through the experience of living abroad, dealing with homesickness, learning a new culture, learning how to find home anywhere you are. I think finding a home wherever you are is a big skill to have, and it's a great thing to learn when moving abroad to China. So until next time, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, check, out the rest of, check out the rest of Teaching English in China's videos. Leave any questions, comments, concerns down below, and until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.